Thank the gentleman, Ms. Bonamici. Recognize. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, and to our witnesses, thank you. This has been an interesting hearing. Uh, and, and this is an important issue uh, for the committee to consider because it's really at a basic level about good jobs for our constituents, growing the economy, and as others have mentioned, really looking at the decline of the middle class. And the National Labor Relations Act is intended to protect workers' rights to organize and to collect collectively bargain and to make sure that employers are treating employees fairly uh, through that process. Uh, and, and I want to reflect a little bit about the history. Uh, I, I actually grew up, uh, even though I represent a great district in the state of Oregon, which is now my home state for many years, I grew up just outside of Detroit. My grandfather worked at Ford Motor Company both before and after the UAW. And when we really look at, at what happened uh, when you know, people were, were beaten and, and punched and kicked, and I, I think we've come a long way since those days, but when we reflect on that history and, and the need to really protect the, the, the process for, for workers, it's important to remember where, how far we've come, but, but uh, how important it is. Uh, as we now in Congress look for ways to get the economy back on track and our country back to work, we should be asking how we can support our workers' rights to choose a union and not erode those rights, uh, and it's about finding that, that right balance. So in your testimony, Ms. Sensor, you state that employers are aware of union organizing efforts before a petition is filed. I, I know that uh, you also suggest that some employers have these anti-union inoculation programs in place. I wonder if you could expand on those a little bit. What, how, how are they aware? Uh, talk a little bit about uh, some of the anti-union inoculation programs. And I also want to mention briefly that my home state of Oregon, the legislature actually banned captive uh, audience meetings. Uh, that was challenged in the courts and upheld at the state level. So some states are taking action. So please expand. So the employers generally know because employees talk and employers listen. So even every meeting that a union holds in an organizing campaign, they presume that at least one person in that room is actually going to go back and tell their manager that they were involved in the meeting. You see it through social media where people are friends on Facebook with a supervisor and they've posted that they've been to a meeting and learning about a union. You see it where a group of people who don't usually have lunch together will go out and have lunch at a, at a restaurant across the street. A manager will do a walk by that restaurant and determine, oh, they're meeting with someone we don't know and there's a union sticker there. And the employers just gain knowledge by watching their workforce and they generally know this well before a petition is filed and that's when the anti-campaign starts. You know that that's when the anti-campaign starts and that the employer has knowledge because the statistics all show and experience plays out that some of the worst unfair labor practices happen in an attempt to get the petition not to be filed. If you fire a leader right before the petition is going to be filed, the union does not file or expected to be filed, the union generally doesn't file the petition right then. The support isn't there because the workers are scared. They've seen what happens to an employee who speaks out or is looking to speak out in favor of unionization. The anti-campaigns that the employer runs walk the line of what's acceptable conduct and acceptable speech. They can't make threats. They can't make explicit threats or provide explicit benefits But in, once the petition is filed. But there's been definitely more than one occasion where in the period right before the petition is filed, an employer grants a wage increase. Thank you. <laughs> and earlier, Ms. Davis said that under the new rules, there wouldn't be an opportunity to litigate bargaining unit issues before an election. Do you agree with that? I don't. The, the limitation on the pre-hearing election would be dependent upon the size of the dispute that's in question. If it doesn't affect more than 20 percent, you wouldn't do it in advance. If it affects less than 20 percent, the employees who are involved would vote subject to a challenged ballot procedure, and that would then be resolved after the election if those are determinative. And when it comes to the supervisory issue, which can be kind of tricky sometimes, it's not always immediately clear. Both sides run the same risk of using those employees as part of the organizing campaign. If the union uses someone to solicit cards from other employees who is later found to be a supervisor, then the entirety of the election is tainted just the same way that if the employer uses someone who is later found to be not a supervisor or is a supervisor and part of the unit, they would also gain the election. Thank you. And quickly, we've heard about the more than 65,000 comments that were submitted, and there's a suggestion that those weren't considered. Is there any reason to believe? I, I assume that the comments were not all one-sided. Is there any reason to believe that the NLRB did not consider the comments in formulating this rule? There's no reason to presume that they've not been 
considered or will be considered since we're still in the proposed rulemaking stage. A final rule hasn't issued yet. And from the others, I still have a few seconds. Is there any reason to believe that the NLRB is not considering the, the comments? I would say that because they issued the exact same rule again. They proposed this rule in 2011. There were 60-some thousand comments. And then this year, just two weeks ago, three weeks ago, they issued the exact same rule verbatim. They didn't take any of the comments into consideration. They just said, here it is again. And so I think that indicates that they didn't consider those comments, and it's questionable whether they'll consider them now. Thank you. And Gen I see my time has expired. The gentlelady's time has expired.